I'm Sean J. Kennedy, and this is Backstage at the Enharmonic. In today's short episode, I chat with Harold Jones on the telephone about brushes, um, what he thinks young folks should learn, his warm-up routine, why he prefers plastic brushes, how he prepared for new material whenever playing with a big band, especially with Sammy Nestico, Count Basie, and some of his favorite recordings to listen to and recordings that he's featured on. One thing to note is that this phone call was recorded on February 7th, 2020, pretty much one month before the entire world shut down. So keep that in mind as we're talking about upcoming meetings and concerts that he's doing with Tony Bennett, etc. So I hope you enjoy this edition of Backstage at the Enharmonic. Hello, Sean. Hey, Harold, how are you? Okay, man. I have you on speakerphone so I can write and take notes and record everything. Is that cool? Okay, yeah. Perfect. So are you in uh, Chicago or something, or are you on the West Coast? Right now I'm in San Francisco. Oh. Tomorrow I go to Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. So I just had a couple questions about brushes. Yeah. Because uh, I'm doing a big thing at a college, so I wanted to get some expert opinions. You've been playing so long and seeing so many young drummers come up. Um, have you noticed anything missing uh, in instruction with brushes or as it relates to brushes or combo playing with younger people? Uh, only that uh, when they're playing the brushes in the beginning, they don't have a sense of uh, the rotation on the drum related to the song and the tempo that they're playing. Hmm. I get you. Uh, yeah. Well, that, I see guys when they're doing that. It's like they're just playing to be playing. Okay, I got, and they're not. A, they're, yeah, so they're not supporting and getting inside the groove. They're just making noise along with everyone else. It seems. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Do you have a warm up routine, or did you like to get ready for brushes, or how do you keep your j- brush chops up? That sort of thing. I only have a couple of little things. I just do each time. And- one is try to do a finger roll with my left hand and uh, uh, with a brush. Mm-hmm. The other is try, try to do a finger roll with my right hand. I mean, uh, you can almost do a roll with a brush with one hand. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know some drummers claim to do it with sticks, but I'd have to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that I, I warm up just trying to do that. And then I just warm up playing a little time within myself. Okay. Uh, yeah, not not to any particular song, but sometimes I love to play along with any song. Yeah. So the the finger roll is that the type of thing where you're going back and forth and getting the uh, friction to create the roll instead of going you're going yes. hard. Okay, so you're going laterally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And do you go do you go like left, right, left, or period? Like how does that go? I would do left for a prolonged period, then right for a prolonged period. Okay. And, and then maybe I'd try to do them both at different times, at the same time, on different drums. I got gotcha. you. I just do that for a little variation for myself. <laughs> and is that with tempo and without tempo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. I know you, uh, last time I saw you when you were with Tony, you had plastic brushes. Um, are they your go-to uh, for most of your playing situations? Yes. That's because... I've been on the road since 1958, and metal brushes were bending or rusty hmm. when you travel. They get rusty, and, uh, and then they got became a problem, or they get bent in traveling. Okay. Uh, and I, I was going through brushes every six months, if not more. Mm-hmm. And I think the traveling was harder on them than the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so... I went into these regal tips about, I don't know, in the late 60s, I guess. And man, I mean, they went through weather, and uh, they got bent. You'd kind of almost lay them down on a warm uh, table, and uh, they would level right back out. So I, I've just been on plastic for that reason for a long time. You've played so many tunes. I... Do you play much new repertoire, or is it all stuff you've played before, by and large? By and large, all the stuff I've played before. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, because I was going to ask you, like, when you get a new chart, like how you would approach charting it out with brushes or something, or if you're in the studio, um, is there anything specific? How about this? What if you have a new, like, some, a new tune is added to the uh, repertoire that you haven't played in years? Um, yeah. Would you sit at the drum set to prepare for that, or would you listen to the lyrics? Like, how would you, what would your pre preparation method be for backing up a singer or a piano player or a saxophone player? Well, if you have any chance to hear them before you have to play, Mm -hmm. That's a big advantage. Okay. Otherwise, if you're just reading the chart like a big band chart, like Sammy Nestico, uh -huh. well, the first the first time I played it would be like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I start adding the chocolate until somewhere after we've been on the road for a few weeks, it'd be over the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a great description. I'm right. Vanilla first, add some chocolate, then it's over the rainbow. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can play all the fills you want after you learn the tune, you know. Sure. As a, as a drummer, we got to lead them into it. we got to bring them out of it. That's great. Yeah. So you don't want to step on anything the very first time. Okay. Just play it as simple as you can. Don't you not show off all, every, all your technique. Yeah. Uh, brushes and sticks, do you have a preference? Or well, like brushes versus sticks? Uh... I'm going to say sticks, okay. because here re recently behind a whole lot of singers, I'm on the cymbals. Uh -huh. And uh, it just seems to swing, because I'm from the old school, where I still got the, the rivets in them. Oh, yeah. I have three rivets. And uh, I, 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 I just get a warm feeling now with my cymbals. And I, I have four, because that way I, I don't just start sounding monotone. Mm-hmm. I might even have four symbols if I try to play in a small group. Hmm. Just so it doesn't get monotone. Only thing that changes in a big band is the drums get bigger. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's see, what else? Um I guess one more. Uh when you what type of grip do you use in your left hand? Traditional, something else, or matched grip? I, I use traditional because that's the way I was taught and that's where I came up. But then I learned that it came from marching and when they came back inside, they kept using it. It was too late for me. I had already, <laughs> I'd already done the rudiments with the traditional grip. All right. Yeah. So you were comfortable yeah. already. Yeah. And, uh, but every time I have a double four day floor top roll, I'm using a match grip. Mm, okay. Just like timpani. Sure. Yeah, for oh, power. Here's one for the students that I'm going to do, uh, be with. You've done so many recordings, um, and they want me to talk about brushes in particular. Um, what are like three, four of your recordings on brushes that you think I should recommend to these kids to check out? Wow. There's a Miles Davis record that has Philly Joe Jones on it. Okay. Da, 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 da. I can't think of the name of it. Okay. Uh, and I can't sing it either. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, uh, let's see. I, but I'm going to say Philly Joe Jones was one master. Okay. Mac Droche was another good one. Okay. There was an old there was an old time drummer named Denzel Best. Yeah. Yeah, he was really good with brushes. Yeah, there yeah. weren't that many good recordings of it. All right. At all. And uh, but that's that's who I can recommend or since think of. You'd have to check them out. But I think Philly Joe Jones was playing with Red Garland, and I think they were in the Miles Davis group. All right, I'll put those pieces together and see if I can find it. Yeah, yeah. What about Harold Jones' recordings on brushes? Well, there's one I did with Sarah Vaughn. Okay. Uh, with the Count Basie band. Wow. I think the name, well, the name of the album I think was Send in the Clowns. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. As far as recordings go, that's the well, only one that comes to mind. Great. Usually I'm on brushes because I'm trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> That is classic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Make a poster out of that, trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> yeah, man, well, you know. 
<laughs> no, I understand. No, I'm, <laughs> it's great yeah, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate the time. I have all this notated and I recorded it and stuff. So I'll make this part of my presentation and give you credit for all this stuff. Um, all right, man. Because I got it from someplace else. Sure. You need to keep that. You need to keep passing it on down. That's the idea, man. I want to help these young guys uh, yeah. keep this art form going. So. Yeah, Sean. I hope so to see you. Great, keep up the great work, man. And have a good year. Thanks, and I hope to see. When are you? I think you're around here with Tony in March, maybe the end of March, around Philly. Uh, I, think. I I don't know for sure, but you, uh, text me the week before. Okay, I will. Because if it's too early, I'll forget. <laughs> and at our age, it could end tomorrow. That's true. So yeah, all right. I'll put a reminder to uh, contact you about a week before and see if we can hook up at that event. Very good. Very good. All right. I appreciate it, Harold. Okay, Sean. Have a great weekend and safe travels. All right, you too, man. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Thanks for checking out the podcast today. And if you could, please give us a thumbs up or a star or a positive comment on whatever service you're listening to this on. It really does uh, help the podcast out. And if you know any jazz musicians or educators out there uh, that would be interested in this, please feel free to share it with them. Today's soundtrack was provided by the Count Basie Orchestra from their album called High Voltage, featuring Harold Jones on the drums. Thanks again for listening, and please check out more episodes of Backstage at the Enharmonic. <laughs>